Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bolin University studio from the International Bowling Campus here in Arlington, Texas. I'm Bart Berger, and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bolin University Profit Break. Thank you for joining us. Our mission here at the university is to enrich people's lives personally and professionally, and the Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce costs, enrich yourself, your team, and your business. So if you're joining the Profit Break for the first time, welcome. We're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you'll be well on your way to improving your profitability. Now today we're gonna to spend some time talking about a topic that we don't often think about in our marketing efforts, and that's music and the role that music plays in defining the guest experience. To help us understand the importance of both music and music video and how that plays in our facilities, we have us with us today Adam Melrose, who is the Chief Playlist Officer, probably the coolest title in the history of mankind ever, but he's the Chief Playlist Officer with Control Play, Adam is a great friend of the bowling industry, and Control Play is home of the Bowling Music Network and FEC Music, where they help businesses provide the right music at the right time. Hey, welcome, Adam. Thank you for taking some time to join us today. Oh, absolute pleasure, Bart. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, hey, let's jump in. I know that you talk to proprietors all around the country, uh, and as they're thinking about how to use uh, music, you know, what are, what are what are the primary issues, the big thing that they're asking you and you see out there in the in the market today? Yeah, um, I think one of the biggest challenges that I hear on a daily basis when we're speaking with uh, you know new subscribers, even current subscribers, is uh, everyone's offering venues that have, you know, based on time of day, could be something completely different. We could be a senior's rec center in the morning, an after-school program, after school, and then uh, league night, and then a full-on nightclub. So one of the biggest challenges we hear from folks coming to us is, I just need help, you know, what do I do at these different times of the day, right? Because obviously what we're playing at Seniors League and nightclub part of the day is, is going to be vastly different. So um, always definitely, you know, folks looking for a solution that can look after sort of the management of, of what's playing at different times of the day. Yeah, and, and I love the fact that, you know, music has really changed, probably one of the biggest things I've seen change in our industry on how it's used in our, our facilities now. And we're going to take a deeper dive in that. But before we get there, I need to deal kind of with the elephant in the room for, for a minute, and that is that uh, I know we have some folks joining us today that uh, while they may have been very successful or are very successful currently, they often provide or use the jukebox or maybe one of the free streaming services as the music for their facility. Can, can we just address that and talk about why that's really a bad idea from a business pr perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in a previous life, before my wonderful job as Chief Playlist Officer here at uh, BMN and FEC, um, I used to run a, a really successful entertainment facility here in town that was more of uh, surrounded billiards. And um, the owner of the place was all excited on a, on a Friday morning when we were opening the place the one time and said, hey, I got this jukebox installed last night. Uh, I think it's going to be really exciting for the weekend. And uh, we had a, a pretty cool system in place where we, you know, we really defined the experience through music. And I told them, I said, here's my, my, my challenges, my worries with the jukebox. And um, I was 100% correct because it was Saturday night and we had about 360 people in the place because it was like a concert venue in a billiards hall. And at the time, Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On was one of the bigger songs on the radio. Um, and a lady went in and put $20 worth of Celine Dion requests in the jukebox at about 10.30 on a Saturday night when my place is hopping and we're usually playing good fun blues music and classic rock and such. And I probably lost 120 people who just walked out the door because there was no way to stop it. Um, it was just hard coded. So, um, you know, my challenge to the owner that night, obviously I ripped the thing out of the wall the next day, but I said, you know, I don't remember seeing um, a bill collector on our thermostat or a coin slot on our thermostat. Uh, and he said, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, you know, we're not, I don't understand why we're allowing people to, you know, dictate the sound and the vibe of our entire business for 40 cents on the dollar for, per request. So that's one of our challenges that we, you know, we discuss with folks all the time is that it's, you know, is it worth giving up the entire atmosphere of your building uh, for that small amount of money that you're making off of a song request? Um, you know, Technomics did a really cool survey recently where over 48% of the folks that were surveyed identified that music was one of the biggest and most important parts of their experience when they went anywhere, you know, entertainment-wise. Um, 
So I think that's that's part of the challenge where with the jukebox is, I mean, I'm not saying your bowlers are going to make terrible <laughs> requests, but you're putting it in their hands at that point. And uh, I think we've all been in businesses before where you're doing one of those, like, what is this music playing? Yeah. Um, but I think when it comes to things like free services, um, you know, if we're cautioning business owner, you know, business person to business person, um, most free streaming services are not made for business. Um, like there's a lot of folks out there just using their personal Spotify account. And that is not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to use Soundtrack to Brand, which is the, you know, Spotify for business um, version of that. So it's, and it's definitely a get what you pay for situation. So. Yeah, Adam, that's some great insight. And, and I hope everyone heard that and heard what Adam said. It was worth the price of admission today just to, to hear that, how powerful that is, is that, you know, it's, it's a unique venue that no other venue do you go into. Do you let the guests decide what your atmosphere is going to be? And I think your example you shared is a powerful one. And, and I hope folks heard that in there. But, there, but there's more that we want to unpack here. So uh, we, we, we've made the decision. We're going to use a reputable service like yours. And uh, now we have to decide between, you know, music, the audio portion, and then the music video. Talk a little bit about each one and how they might fit in and what you would recommend. Sure. Um, I think when it all comes down to it, the first thing that the provider is going to need to look at is, you know, currently, what am I set up for? If all I have is a sound system, then obviously music is going to be the first and best step to attack. If I have screens or the ability to play video as well, um, then certainly the video portion is a great way to upgrade that guest experience. Um, and, you know, we're still looking and tackling, you know, what time of day is it? What's the day part? What's the demographic we're dealing with? And what music should we align to that group? Um, but then it's, yeah, of course, um, if we just have a sound system, cool. Let's make sure it's the best quality sound system we can have. It's not old boxes that have been hanging uh, on the ceiling since the 70s. If that's what you got, great. But certainly there's some very cost-effective ways to upgrade your sound system right now through powered speakers and a variety of other things too. But um, when it comes to video, if you have the ability to play it, um, there's some pretty cool numbers that, uh, you know, every month over a billion people just listen to music, be it a song or a music video on YouTube. And when it, you know, when they drill down even more, one in four Americans watch a music video or watch music videos in general every single month. So call it 25% of the population are watching music videos. So if that's a big thing they're doing at home, then while they're with you, if you can make that part of the guest experience, then certainly it's another great way to add and upgrade and, and elevate that experience. Um, and, and certainly what's, what's really cool about it is if we've got the music video piece in play, then we've got a really cool platform to inject, um, you know, digital signage and, and messaging on, on that same screen where we're kind of double dutying the screens that are in your business. So, again, kind of recap there. If you've got a great sound system, tackle it there first. Then look at upgrading that experience. Um, and I bet if you went down and looked at the phones of 80 percent of the people in your bowling center and they could be eight to 80 years old, there's a lot of folks with TikTok on their phone. And that is a video centric solution right now that people are glued to. Um, and, and, you know, you look at the power of TikTok that that's even had uh, to build up music right now, too, is, you know, a song like Dreams by Fleetwood Mac, you know, great song. Um, but I bet you an eight year old can tell you they know that song now because TikTok made it famous because some guy on a skateboard was drinking cranberry juice and listening to that song. So um, it, we are in a video world. And uh, and if you can make the, the update and the upgrade to it, I, I would highly suggest it. Even if it's one screen in your center, I think it would uh, it'd be valuable for you to add that as part of the experience. Yeah. So you mentioned TikTok. What are some of the other trends that you're seeing to help use music and video to differentiate the guest experience? Um, certainly there's uh, there are a variety of viral video uh, providers that are out there right now. That's a cool way. It's just, I think when we look at our, our business, it's, how, you know, years ago, people started, you know, taking out lanes to add in redemption. Um, and I think, you know, the more attractions we can be offering to our guests while they're with us, it's only going to add to that overall guest experience while they're in your business. So uh, whether it's music video or viral video or sports on the TVs, um, I think you just want to have a look at that's really another attraction people are coming uh, and that's a part, you know, coming to your business for and, and that add to that experience. And then that also becomes kind of their expected nature that they're, they're going to have when they come to your business. And, you know, we hear from subscribers all the time that if the music videos aren't on, um, you know, there's people that will be like, hey, I'm down on, you know, links three and four. Can you make sure that they're on? So um, I think the uh, the trend of, you know, 
adding more video and adding more things like viral video to the screens has been very popular over the last couple of years for sure. So let's talk about that. As you've seen some of those shifts, uh, you know, trending that way, how has that changed the products that, you, you know, your organization offers? Because I know you folks have evolved as the, the trends have evolved. Absolutely. Um, it's, yeah, it's always been a thing where I know with, with most of the consumers right now, everybody it used to be that they wanted to just go and play. And then that evolved to, well, let's go drink and play. And then in a lot of cases that became, let's go eat, drink and play. Um, so being that bowling was already there as the, the main attraction, you know, the play side of it was looked after. Um, and then I think as folks have really upped their game when it comes to the eat and drink side of things, um, you know, you've been attracting different crowds or people that are used to going to restaurants that um, have really cool vibes. So what we've done in the, uh, in the offerings that we've got is certainly try to just create as many sort of single click solutions for the proprietors so that if it is college bowling night, um, you know, we've got a college bowling playlist ready to go. That's music that is very driven by the music that the you know, 16 to 25 year old crowd is listening to and charting and things like that. That's playing on TikTok. Or, you know, um, during uh, COVID, obviously, you know, we had a lot of our subscribers reaching out just saying, hey, we just need a really happy playlist right now. So we've developed a playlist called Feeling Good. So what we've tried to do, you know, back in the day, you had a rock channel, you had a hits channel. Uh, but what we're really trying to do is look at those guest experiences that the majority of our subscribers are providing and saying, cool, can we just have an even better solution now to, to add to that? So, yeah, it's college night, here's college playlist. Um, if it's 80s throwback night, here's your 80s throwback playlist. So we've really tried to look at what are those sort of prime time sessions that a, a proprietor or a center could be hosting, and let's make sure that we have something that works with that, um, be it you know on the entertainment side of things, and more importantly, if it's uh, you know a, a beer league, uh, you know baseball and bowling league, you know is there cool content that we have that that venue can also be promoting. Um, you know, the fact that you play the games and, and, and have sports playing in the venue, too. So um, we've just done our best to, to follow the trends and, and make sure that there's proper entertainment to, to align to the experiences that the uh, proprietors are, are putting out there. Yeah. And, and one of those trends you mentioned is digital signage. And I don't want to leave today without talking about that. Tell, let's talk about digital signage and how that plays into the guest experience. Certainly. Um, and I think with digital signage, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to DSE or the Digital Signage Expo in Vegas. It's huge. There's thousands of companies doing it. And I think there's sort of two schools of thought on digital signage. And one of them where it's just sort of a, a rotating uh, board of just ad after ad after ad. Um, and in a lot of cases, there's people that will be reaching out to your, your business and saying, hey, we'll put the TV up and, um, and we're going to promote, you know, the Ford dealership down the road. Um, and maybe you'll get a piece of it. It's similar to the jukebox conversation. Um, but, you know, our take on this has always been you've already got you spent a lot of money to get these bowlers into your business. So while they're there, you know, can we direct the digital signage more towards their experience and making them better informed um, and educate them on maybe some programs that you have going on? Uh, you know, people are always more apt to buy something when they're within 30 feet of that set item. So I'm um, sure you'd be helping out your buddy with the Ford dealership down the road. But if uh, we play a pizza ad and all of a sudden you're selling more pizza in your snack bar, I think that that bodes well for your business at the end of the day. So and I think it's important that um, you, you examine the entertainment and the digital signage and, and do, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people will just do kind of still ads after still ad, after still ad, and, and motion creates emotion around advertising. So uh, even if you are just doing ad after ad on um, the screen, if there's a way to make sure that it's motion graphic rather than just stills, it certainly drives more attention, will catch more, uh, catch more attention and, and be more engaging. Um, certainly the way we've done it is always, we will play the ads on the same screen that the music videos are playing on for a brief amount of time, um, usually in a video only mode, because uh, we don't want to interrupt the music experience, but certainly for 10 to 30 seconds at a time, if we can let people know that, you know, you're looking for league sign-ups or you got a bucket of beer special or whatever's going on, um, you know, it's a great way to kind of engage them, influence the buying decision, and then send them right back to the, to the entertainment. Um, and then most recently, um, a couple of cool trends we've seen too are, uh, you know, folks using digital signage to recognize their staff, uh, maybe milestones and showing pictures of here's my staff member he or she's been here for two years. This is really awesome. Thanks for your time. Um, and even more really cool campaign we've been working on with some folks uh, is um, the ability to help recruit new staff. 
Uh, people are already in your business. They're having a great time. And I know you folks at the PPAA have put together some really cool content on recruiting. Um, and we've already got hundreds of locations using that content right now uh, in an effort to bring new people on. So I think, again, yeah, we can educate, engage, and influence these folks by buying things and also making, you know, potentially uh, having them become part of your team as well. So great, yeah. great stadium there or, or arena to, uh, to promote. Yeah, a lot that we covered today, Adam. I got time for one more before we let you go. I'm not going to ask you about the great debate of paper versus plastic, but I will do want to leave with this projections, projectors versus TVs seems to be kind of a debate in that space there. So um, is there a right or wrong answer? And what can we leave folks today with uh, your expertise? Absolutely. Uh, we worked a lot of different integrators that installed both. Uh, and I think there's no wrong answer here. And I think it, a lot of it comes back down to budget and technical ability. I think if what you're looking to do is add more screens to your venue uh, in a hurry that, you know, I've spoke with guys who've come back after Black Friday and spent, you know, went out and bought $20, $99 TVs and a bunch of TV mounts. Um, the nice thing about TVs is that they're really easy to swap out and they're going to be bright no matter what you have going on in the building. Where projectors are a challenge is if, uh, if you're going to use them for just lights out or black light bowling, no big deal. Any projector will get the job done. But if your plan is to have a great big wall in front of the masking units um, that are going to be on all day, every day, obviously, you've got to look at bulb life and brightness. And one of the bigger challenges is almost every bowling center in the, you know, in the country uh, have lines of uh, fluorescent lighting above the lanes. And fluorescent lighting just loves to destroy projector um, shots. So it's going to dull it out. So I guess it really comes down to um, if you're going to run them in the dark, I think projectors are a great wow factor. But I think if what you're looking to do immediately is sort of just add more screens, add the ability to add more video content to the building um, that, you know, a variety of flat panel screens in between your uppers um, is, is a great way to get into that. And a little easier because you're just basically putting in uh, some stands and obviously running some wiring uh, where projectors is a little more geometry involved but you're getting a bit more of a, uh, a wow effect. So I, I like them both. I work with a lot of integrators that do both, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it just comes down to, you know, analyzing um, uh, what's best for your budget and, and what can you set up or do you have the budget to pay somebody. But regardless of whether it's a projector or a screen is what is your content plan for what's going to play on them? Um, Cause so often, you know, part of the trend we were talking earlier was, what are people coming to you for? And we do get people who call all the time and say, hey, I just put 100 TVs in my place or I put five big 20-foot projectors in here and I have nothing to play on. Um, and uh, I know personally, I walk into restaurants and bars and bowling centers all the time where they have the, the food network or the cooking channel on mute. And that's not driving a whole lot of entertainment to, to what's going on. Yeah. So uh, whether it's screens or projectors is what do you plan on them and how does that align to the guest experience you're trying to create for that exact time of day? Great stuff there, Adam. Well, hey, uh, as always, thank you so much for your knowledge, your expertise, and your time, and for being a great uh, industry partner. My pleasure. Thanks awesome. for having me. Well, hey, folks, uh, Adam and the team have always been gracious with sharing the information. If uh, you want to con uh, con contact Adam directly, his uh, email address, website, he's always been a great partner and, and happy to uh, do that, and we're, we're lucky to have him as part of the, part of the Bolin family there. So, folks, as we wrap up another edition of the Bowling University Profit Break, remember that when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you next time for another great episode. If you have any questions about today's show or would like additional information, you can reach us anytime at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting BowlingUniversity.net. The Profit Break is now available when you want it, and we have new episodes premiering every month. Until then, I'm Bart Berger, and remember, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>